Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to tie a France fly uh, variation in orange that's been really successful for me here. Um, this is the first year in my local area where winter fishing is allowed with the, you know, in the past it had been like really only one stream locally for me and that stream always got hammered and I hated it. Um, but this year it's legal uh, everywhere. Uh, so uh, I'm getting out there and, uh, you know, you got to go deep. So uh, I'm uh, tying and using uh, these Euro style uh, jig patterns a lot. So this is a 16 size 16 jig hook, 2.4 slotted tungsten bead. Uh, I'm going to do a uh, coque de Leon for the tail. Uh, this is whiting, um, which is uh, Dr. Whiting bred actual Gallo de Leon uh, roosters with, with his stock to create this. Um, and uh, it's cheap. Uh, and it does the job for the tails. The real beautiful stuff uh, from Spain, from Leon, the Gallo de Leon, I, uh, I would not waste uh, for tailing fibers here. Uh, so uh, here we go, uh, just trying to tie it on top. I'm pulling the fibers up and towards me and wrapping back with flat thread. I'm not going all the way uh, to the end of the shank. Uh, I'm actually shortening up uh, the hook a little bit. Uh, the tailing fibers, now that I'm looking at it, look a little bit long, uh, but you, you want it to be about the, the length of the, of, uh, the shank. Um, and now with open spiral wraps going forward with flat thread, again, not to create any bulk here. The idea is to have a pattern that gets to depth quickly uh, and can be fished there. So we're not trying to make any bulk here. Uh, the original France fly uses, uh, you know, a dark color, probably like olivish, uh, brown, black kind of zone. I believe micro tubing, so it flattens. Um, I have a very crafty daughter uh, who does some beadwork, so I have some uh, bead cord here. Uh, this is orange. The orange color has been working really, really well for me here locally. Um, the color of the thread. Uh, I chose there is kind of like a chestnutty, cinnamony color uh, in 16 aught, and uh, I'm just trying to uh, a keep the bulk down, but also because this is translucent, uh, you know, sort of go with the color, but also mute it a little bit, uh, and always flattening the thread. I was just flattening the thread there, and now I'm pulling that beading cord um, tight and to thin it out as I work my way back. And I'm going short of where I tied in the tail. This way, when I f begin to wrap the beading cord, I won't um, interfere with the tail and the tail placement. And then open spiral wraps with the flat thread back. Again, not to minimize the bulk. You can see the space between where the tail is and where the beading cord starts. This way, when I do, again, when I do that wrap, it doesn't interfere at all with the tail. The tail placement, if a little bit of thread shows through, say la vie, not a big deal. Um, and I'm pulling tight on the beading cord here in the, in the first couple of wraps, uh, because again, that thins it out and uh, will create sort of a taper as I loosen up on the tension of the beading cord uh, as I wrap forward. And uh, I'm gonna go all the way. Uh, some people leave a gap because there's gonna be uh, a dubbed collar, uh, but I'm gonna go all the way and just tuck this sucker uh, in the slot of the bead there and tie it off. Um, I've been um, you know, fishing some of these uh, Euro style jigs now uh, a little bit this winter and uh, a bunch of different patterns. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, on a mono rig, uh, so really light, thin lines. Um, and, uh, that way I can use less weight. This is only 2.4, uh, and I can get down there. And for whatever reason, this color pattern has been, has been king, um, on my local, uh, my collar, I'm going to use Peacock Ice Dub. Uh, the Ice Dub has really long fibers. Uh, so I'm cutting them up now. Uh, there's a, there's an ice dub, uh, manufacturer called, I believe it's pronounced Sabai that has really fine fibers. 
uh, that would be an excellent choice. Um, I already own this one from from prior usage, so I'm just, you know, tiny, tiny pinch, just cut it up in small pieces, throw it on there, um, get, as you can see, just get a wrap on there, and then you can really tighten it up as you go. Um, and the idea is to create a hot spot, um, creating a little bit of an attractor area, uh, but at the same time not add bulk. And I'm putting a little head cement on the thread because, again, I don't want a thread collar here. I'm just going to do a, a three-turn whip finish, and I want to not only lock the thread so I can cut it off, but, but really protect it, seal it in um, all in the same move and not have to try and get some head cement down there under the, uh, um, the peacock dub. And uh, there we go. Um, got that in there, and uh, I'm gonna cut it free. And then I'm gonna remove. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna cut anything sticking out. Um, again, I'm just looking for uh, a little bit of the flash here. Uh, I'm not looking for a lot of movement or fiber sticking out um, to uh, slow down the sink rate. Um, and these patterns you can do in all sorts of colors. Um, the beading cord uh, that I used uh, looked like it came in like a like a medley pack of colors that my daughter got and she either got it at like Michael's or, or Walmart or something. Um, so, you know, for, for probably inexpensive price, you get all kinds of different colors that you can use um, to do this. Create a very, very simple yet very, very effective pattern. Um, and uh, there you go. Here's a, a little bit better photo of the fly with a little less intense light. And thank you. Have a good day. Bye.